What up? Jeff here with all my Bitcoin renegades. And I just have a picture up there for you today. Um, before we go live, I just wanted to share my day with you guys today. Um, I, there's been a real um, dispute over parking in the building that I live. I've been here for about four years now. Um, and I just finally received a parking spot here. And I guess one of the neighbors didn't like that I have a parking spot because somehow they got overlooked or whatever the situation was because it happened to me too. Anyway, they, they poured Vaseline all over my windows and egged my car. Um, and you know what? I, I just want to say right now, I'm going to pray a blessing over those people. Um, I am going to, you know, um, uh, try to press charges on them, but I w I'm going to pray for them as well. Um, just because I don't believe that it is right of them to uh, vandalize my car. The eggs actually ruined the paint on my car. The Vaseline caused me to have to get rid of my um, windshield wipers. So I'm, I'm, I'm going to pray a blessing for them, but I'm also going to file a police report as well. Um, and hopefully they don't do this to anybody else. But anyway, guys, um, things are good. I, despite all of that, like I, I'm tough, man. God has given me, you know, a tough mind. I, I deal with things and I move on, right? I don't hold a grudge. I don't go for revenge. Um, and the market today, this is what we're going to talk about. So um, I, I was actually expecting a nice little pump in the market. And instead of getting a nice little pump in the market, um, we got the Bitcoin hammer instead. And if you've been following my channel, um, this is the Bitcoin hammer to the T. This is exactly um, what I tell you guys about when we talk about the Bitcoin hammer. And this is it. Um, you can really see how they use the Bitcoin dominance. And I'm going to explain exactly what this is to you. And it doesn't always play out. Um, I've seen the same pattern before. And it doesn't always work, but what uh, um, I think it it works best when altcoins um, are not following the Bitcoin dominance. So in crypto, there is something called the Bitcoin dominance. And actually, I want to explain what this is to you guys because this will. Um, uh, well, let's find the Bitcoin dominance chart, okay? And then we can kind of see exactly how much of the complete market that Bitcoin controls, which is the Bitcoin dominance. And as you see right here, right now, Bitcoin controls 41.6% of the market right now. Um, as you see here, 41.6, that's a lot of the market, um, almost 50% of the market. And when it controls that, um, it actually can affect the entire um, crypto ecosystem and cryptos itself. So as you see today, the Bitcoin dominance skyrocketed from 39% all the way up to 40.6. Uh, this is going to be part of the Bitcoin hammer that I've realized. Um, a nice pump in the Bitcoin dominance. Also, if you look at internet computer side by side with Bitcoin today, you can see that it didn't pump at all. Even when Bitcoin pumped, look at the difference in the chart. Bitcoin had this nice rally right here but you notice the internet computer and um most other cryptos except for ethereum because ethereum actually holds a nice little amount of this market dominance so the bitcoin hammer doesn't work on ethereum per se because ethereum holds too much of the market dominance this is a real thing i'm gonna make this pattern a, a verified thing one day um, i'm gonna figure out all the aspects of it and then i'm gonna put it together and i'm gonna submit it to whoever i need to submit it to um, but the Bitcoin hammer is a real thing. So what they do, I'll show you right here. They and, and you can watch the Bitcoin dominance go up as it goes. So what happens is they pump the price of Bitcoin. As you see, none of the altcoins pumped at all. So the Bitcoin dominance goes up even higher. And what they do is normally a, a dump. And it can be a small one like this from uh, 17900 uh, even $100 down. It could be a small dump. And you don't always have to have the dump before this happens. A lot of the time there's a small dump and then this pump happens with a sharp decline like that. And it always ends up at the same price again. Look at that, 17,700, 17,700. You know, so it always, it starts at a level, it has a dump, a pump, and then they use that Bitcoin dominance right here because as Bitcoin goes up and the altcoins don't, Bitcoin gets more of the market dominance. And that's the way it works. And it ends up basically back at the same level it was at well, these take a sharp decline, right? Well, now Bitcoin is going down a little bit more. 
Um, but as you see, it always ends up at the same level for a little while. This is part of the Bitcoin hammer. It always looks the same. And sometimes it actually happens over a couple of days. And I think they tried it back here and it didn't really work because Bitcoin didn't have enough of the market dominance. If we go look back, yeah, it's been down at like 3940. It did go a little bit up here, but got, you know, down, boom. And then it had a breakout of this resistance, which caused Bitcoin to go up to a nice high level of about 18,250, 275 um, before, you know, kind of coming back down. And yeah, I think they kind of tried it right here. See this dump, pump, dump, but it didn't work right because Bitcoin didn't have enough of the market dominance right here. So, um, and the internet computer was actually going up at the time with Bitcoin. And they use it normally when, when altcoins don't go up. Let's actually grab a couple more altcoins um, and show you it's not just internet computer. This happened with a lot of the high layer ones, let's say Algo. Uh, this one, let's also get out. I don't know. I don't really like Solana, but maybe let's even look at Solana for um, or just reference to what happened. Um, okay, Solana. It actually... How much of the market does it have? Seven billion. So it might only work outside of the top 10. It might because look how it, or five billion. Sorry, that's the fully diluted. But a five billion dollar market cap might just be enough to withstand that Bitcoin dominance. So maybe the higher like, you know, top 10, top 15 might not um, be affected as bad by the Bitcoin hammer like Ethereum. Yeah, that's number 14. So possibly these aren't affected as bad. I would like to see what happens. See how it went up with Bitcoin? And then back down. So it doesn't get affected as much, um, just like Ethereum. But these other altcoins like Algorand, um, your other layer ones, your ICPs, um, they don't really get um, as a nice move. See, this did go up, but not as much as Bitcoin, right? So that's what you got to look at as well. Um, internet computer, I don't know what happened with it today, but it, it didn't really go up with Bitcoin at all. I think it's just because of the market dominance, how internet computers like number 39 um you know these where, where's the algorand in, in the the top let's see it is number 28 so it is a higher level one and the the higher um in the rank you are the more um i've noticed that it um correlates with bitcoin um and as you see it did go up but it didn't end up at the same level look so this is what i'm talking about it started at 22 cents but it ended up you know uh well at the, the high part almost you know 22.3 up here it didn't end up in the same place, right? Like Bitcoin did. And it didn't go down that much compared to others, right? But yeah, uh, uh, like internet computer. So, and, and this is not a normal thing for ICP. Normally it goes up with Bitcoin, it goes down with Bitcoin. Um, and I would like to look at some other, like the graph. Um, actually, let's even look at um, Alluvium. Just a random crypto. Okay, yeah, see, it was definitely affected by the Bitcoin hammer because it is a low cap one. It's number 187. As you see, it did have a gradual climb here, um, but definitely ended up lower um, than that point by a little bit. And then that big dump we just get now um, that Bitcoin has as well. But this is the Bitcoin hammer, though, folks. It isn't as drastic, you know, for all cryptos, depending. It looks like, man, someone's trying to dump on Internet computer again. I don't I thought all of our enemies were gone. So, um, but ICP will recover. This isn't a, a terrible thing. You know, the Bitcoin hammer came out and it smashed us to the ground. Um, there are still things I need to work out to say, okay, well, here's a parameter that we can tell before it happens. Like when we get to here, know that we're going to, you know, have this dump, you know, if some of the, the altcoins aren't following up. I was thinking we could possibly have an altcoin season. I was like, okay, the altcoins aren't really going up with Bitcoin. Maybe after Bitcoin goes up to 18,500, you know, it kind of stays going sideways there and then we get an altcoin season. But no, we're, we're still in that, you know, time of, you know, the bear market. But check this out. I mean, the, the things are, the sentiment starting to change. Right now, our fear is the highest um, that it has been and the higher, the better. The lower, the more fearful. And then we get into extreme fear um, last week and last month. So we're getting out of that extreme fear. We are getting um, up into 31 now. And this is after, um, you know, this dump today. It did pump though first. So we had Bitcoin pump first, which gets people out of the fear a little bit. Um, so even a pump that didn't really, um, you know, have fruit. 
Um, it, but that's what they do. They pump it up to resistance and then dump it on us. And look, that way they're able to break this support level. That's what they do. They pump it up to resistance to smash it down and break that support. Also use the Bitcoin dominance to smash down other altcoins. All of them got wrecked today. You know, um, internet computer um, was actually starting to rise. I think that's why it fell the way that it did. Because if you look at the last seven days, we were up to about 450. Um, we were doing pretty good. We actually went all the way up to 460 um, for a little while. So we were doing pretty good. And if you look at Bitcoin this week, um, it didn't really do anything, right? It stayed about 17,200 in that same period. The internet computer had a nice pump. So I think that's the only reason we dumped so hard is because um, there was a lot of, you know, buying going on and then it just got overbought you know, during, you know, um, this scenario right here when Bitcoin was going down and then had the pump and we just didn't have enough volume. And, and it seemed like most of the volume was just going into Bitcoin. Let's look at that volume. Yeah, we're up over 26 billion now. And remember, we were just at 18 billion the other day, which was pretty good. But when we get up into that 26 you know billion dollar volume, you're starting to, you know, talk about a market movement. You know, the more volume, the more the market is going to move everybody. So um, we are up to about 865 um, billion dollar market cap. Um, we're almost at a trillion again. That would be really good to get to a trillion. Um, and uh, you know, in the year on a high note, um, the Bitcoin dominance says about 39% here. Um, and we're talking about, you know, uh, a 2% difference. So I would definitely come, um, check out the trading view one, uh, coin market cap. They're good. Um, but they can get it wrong sometimes. So I really think Bitcoin has more of the dominance in the market right now um, for everything moving. So let's go in and do a little bit of TA um, on internet computer. But before we do that, I want to go over and talk about the internet computer um, and the Bitcoin integration now. So anybody developing, you know, I, I want to just shout out ICP swap. I want to shout out um, Infinity Swap. Uh, um, I want to shout out, um, what is it, Nexium or Heli Helix? No, I can't remember. Helix? Helix? I think they're doing stuff with Bitcoin. Um, check them out. Um, but Bitcoin smart contracts on the internet computer. The block height of the Bitcoin blockchain up to which the Bitcoin canister is synced, this usually lags the Bitcoin blockchain by only a few seconds, which is the time that it takes a mined Bitcoin block to propagate through the Bitcoin network and to be ingested into the internet computer and processed by the Bitcoin canister. So it's up to 767,461. Um, is that how many blocks there are of on, on the Bitcoin blockchain of internet computer? I mean, that's a lot. That's almost a million blocks. Um, and as you know, internet computer does something like 37 blocks per second, which is like hundreds of thousands of transactions, right? Because they do what? Like anywhere from five to 10,000 transactions per second. So that means that, you know, 36 blocks has anywhere from five to 10,000 transactions in it. So uh, this must be, you know, a couple million transactions. And that's pretty good in the, in the first few, you know, days or even, you know, seven days of this project um, being live. This is great. This is what we were waiting for, guys. And, you know, the price hasn't really boomed yet, but I, I think as, you know, this starts to get more, more use and people are start learning about it, you know, they start doing more marketing. Dominic, um, you know, gets on more platforms and starts talking about it. We're going to be in a good way very soon. So I'm going to go to the chat real quick, see what's up with you guys. Um, just touch base. Oh, um, so Motivational Sub is talking about the CPI report, saying everything is good with that. Um, and I agree. I think, you know, um, <clears throat> there should be lots of jobs because with the supply chain being congested, the, the way to fix that is to put more people to work, right? So more jobs, more money, better economy, more supplies, right? So I think that could be fixed. You know, I think that's why the numbers are increasing. Um, and hopefully that, that continues. Bitcoin goes up a, a lot with the traditional markets. Just know that, guys. Um, more than internet computer and the other ones. But Bitcoin has an effect to bring other crypto up with it. Sometimes you get a negative effect with the Bitcoin hammer. Um, and, and these people with a lot of money know how to manipulate the market, guys. So it isn't just FTX. All the people that he greased are still in crypto. So there's, there's, it wasn't just SBF that did this, guys. It, it was a multitude of people, including Gary Gensler. Um, he, he was the puppeteer. Um, to make regulation easy on FTX and try to squash everything else. Um, and I think, I think it was possibly uh, another, you know, high powered person that blew this up. I think CZ has contacts in the world. 
um, that, that helped him bring down FTX because if FTX frauds everybody, what does it do to Binance? Well, it has everybody looking at Binance like, oh, can we trust Binance now? So basically FTX, you know, if he would have got away with the scam for years, how much damage would that have really done to traditional markets like Coinbase and Binance, right? It would have kind of screwed the market over the longer it lasts, you know, so I'm kind of glad we got this out and done with now um, so that we can move forward. And here's an article, actually. Um, you know, the SBF was arrested. I'm sure you heard it on all the other influencers channels, um, but he was arrested. And um, check out Altcoin Daily's video on this, actually. Um, he was talking um, about the new CEO um, uh, talking, and that was a good video by Altcoin Daily. Check that out for sure. Just go check on his channel. Um, but they, they were basically saying all the things that he did, he's being charged with like wire fraud, um, you know, and just a couple other things. I think he's going to get securities fraud. I mean, there's just a lot of charges that he could be, you know, um, but I think the people, I don't think he's the only one who should be arrested guys. I think he is a fall guy. Yes, it was his, he was the mastermind, but he, he didn't do it by himself. Everybody, he had people in high places that were breaking the law that were stealing money with him. And I think Kevin O'Leary possibly is one of them, you know, um, and, and Gary Gensler is definitely a suspect in my eyes. Um, uh, at least we're looking the other way. And that is, you know, inaction is the same thing as if you allow them to do it yourself, standing by and saying, Oh, well, I, I just was standing there. I didn't do anything. That's as bad, you know, as, uh, doing it yourself. If you see something, say something, man. You know what I mean? So if anybody who worked with them, you know, didn't they notice that things, I mean, didn't he hire anybody from other exchanges or like anywhere else that was like, wait a minute, this guy isn't running things right here. Like I worked for Coinbase or I worked for Binance and they didn't do things like they kept a record of customers funds and they kept it in a different place. But what didn't anybody notice or they got paid off? That's why. And so I think other people should be held accountable, not just SBF. This is the fall guy. Um, and it was him. Yeah. Yeah. He deserves the, the main uh, heat, but he didn't do it by himself. That's all I want to say about that. Um, don't forget to subscribe. Yeah, we're almost at 2,500 subscribers, guys. We are so close. Thank you guys for everything. Um, but it does say about 42% of the people that watch my videos are not subscribed. So even if you just watch casually, um, you don't have to hit the bell or if you want to watch it all the time, hit the bell. Um, but it won't like bug you all the time if you subscribe, only if you hit that bell. So it'll help me. It'll help the algorithm. And you can just watch casually. You don't have to come here all the time. Or if you want to know every day, you can come every day that I do this. Uh, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, Sunday, um, and then Tuesdays or actually Thursdays, not Tuesdays, Thursdays. I do um, non-ICP videos. So follow that up with some Dawn and warm water. Oh, I thought you were going to say warm and brown. Warm and brown. <laughs> Is that off of uh, Impractical Jokers? Give me a hot pipe and plate of warm and brown. Dawn and warm water. Yeah, that's what my sister said too, actually. She's like, put some Dawn on it. And luckily, um, I used some Clorox wipes to get the, um, Vaseline off of my car. And then, um, I used just paper towels, um, without water because <laughs> Vaseline is oil, right? So it, it, water doesn't help. So anyway, I'm glad that's over with. Hopefully they don't do anything again. Um, I don't know why they would. I don't know why they wouldn't just come talk to me in the first place. But anyway, Genesis 2 NFT has a screen and shows live analytics. So cool. Beautiful. It's launched today. 5.5 ICP for one. So I have way too many NFTs right now, guys. I can't buy anymore. Um, uh, oh man, I, I'm just, I'm so buried in, um, in, in NFTs right now. I want to support all these projects and I love ICP, but uh, I'm not rich. So like, I think I just, I have a little too many IC, uh, ICP NFTs right now. But um, I love the ones I have, and I want to keep them. So um, I'm I'm pretty happy with that. Uh, 19k Bitcoin, be bullish. 16.6k Bitcoin, be bearish. Bitcoin is in a vague place. So what I'm thinking right now, I I honestly, and I'm a bullish guy. I think we're gonna dump one more time. Honestly, with the way the market is looking right now, it looks like it wants to do one more final big shakeout, 
and then a breakout. That, I really think we're going to have to go to 15. Um, I, I just, or 14, five. I really think that it might just wick down below our previous all time high before we start to go up again. Um, I'd be happy if that didn't happen, but with the way ICP looked today and the overall market, um, I'm not very happy with it. I see the bears are in control when they move Bitcoin up to a resistance to dump, uh, to dump it and break support. That means the bears are in firm control. They had a plan. They had a lot of money and they were able to do what they wanted to do. Unfortunately, um, the bears won that battle. Um, people that are not wise in the markets think, oh, Bitcoin is going up. Let me sell alts and get Bitcoin. Alts go down and Bitcoin stabilizes back to what it was. So this is the, the problem with trying to time the market. And that's all this is. You're trying to catch, uh, they say it's like trying to catch a falling knife, right? It just, it, it's very rare that you catch it. And if you do catch it, you're probably going to get cut. You know what I mean? So it's just like, it's too risky to do that. What the best way and not, and not do it the way Coinbase tells you, but dollar cost averaging. So what you're doing is you're buying a, a crypto, the same crypto, like say if you want to put five grand, you don't just throw $5,000. And I know you, all you probably know this or most of you, but what you want to do is divide that up over a period of time. That way you're getting, and you do it at the lower when it dips, you don't just do every week at five o'clock because what if it's at the highest price every week at five o'clock? So you want to pick, okay, Bitcoin just dipped right now. What are we at? Bitcoin just dipped down from 18,000 to 17. I even wouldn't buy now. But if we went down to like 16 um, and then showed like some strength, like it might, you know, reverse, I might put in, you know, some there and then wait a week, see where it goes. If we do break 18, you know, and get a resistance that like go up to 21 and then it goes back down to 18, maybe 18 would be a good buy then, you know, but right now 17 in, in the overall of things, if I had five grand, I'd only put maybe a couple hundred dollars in it right now just because where we're at, right? But internet computer, on the other hand, we just had a massive dump, right? We just had a big dump and um, we broke support at $4.30. Once we broke that $4.30 support that we had, um, we were going down to $4. Um, if we didn't go back up, like I said, if we um, broke out about $4.40, 4 I, I said $4.30 something, um, we're good. But if we go back down to about $4.15, we're probably um, going to go down. And that's what happened. Unfortunately, we did go back down under $4, but I do believe this is temporary. Um, we might wick down again. Like I said, if Bitcoin decides to go to 15 K, um, I do believe the internet computer is going to have, you know, um, depending on how low Bitcoin goes, if we don't see a new low from Bitcoin, we're probably not going to see a new low from ICP either. If we see a new low from Bitcoin, like a $14,500 low, then we will see internet computer go to about $3.20. Um, that's where I see the price going. If Bitcoin does do a further wick, we will lose about 30 cents from our previous low. Um, if Bitcoin loses about $1,000, I'm going to $14,500. So other than that, let's get into some indicators here. Um, we were bullish on the weekly, which means um, on the RSI, which means we had enough volume to sustain price movement to the upside. So I'm wondering what happened here. If we had enough volume to sustain movement, um, then what happened? And we're still above that, which means even though we did have a dump now, we are we still have enough volume to go back up. Um, if we were under this, it would be resistance. So if we can turn this area, and it is previous support over here at about you know um, $3.91, which is good because now we do have a little bit of support right here. And I would like to see that. Um, and yeah, we're, we're confirming that support right now. If we um, actually go back up, um, this is what I thought could happen too. And then if we go up, I was hoping we'd have a higher pump and then go down because then we could have some sort of an inverse head and shoulders. Um, but I don't know if we can have one right here because the neckline is just too wonky. It's a wonky neckline. Um, yeah, I don't. Yeah, I don't think that can happen. Ooh, maybe it can. It is kind of wonky, but if we come out somewhere like this, maybe? Because look at that. With with the, the wick, yeah, you can't do candle to wick, though. You have to do candle to candle. Okay. That could be the neckline. I mean, and then we wouldn't really have to break up very high, like to 420. 
to get up. But yeah, I don't I don't think that's gonna be um, that that's just too wonky. Uh, I'm okay with like maybe one that's like down here a little bit wonky, but this one is just you know straight down. So um, I don't think that inverse head and shoulders is gonna happen because of that. But let's get this EMA nine out here just to see um, if we are you know um, yeah we're still under that. Um, we we keep getting rejected by this EMA nine on the weekly, um, and that is going to be our big resistance. If we are going to turn bullish, we need to get back up above $4.45. Um, and that's where I was hoping we'd go up to, you know, um, but we got, we got rejected from that. So um, now let's go to the daily real quick. I'm going to make this kind of quick. Um, let's go and check out um, the Bollinger and see where we're at on this daily chart here. Um, it does look like there could be some sort of a descending triangle right here. Unfortunately, that's a bearish sign. But no, it's a symmetrical triangle. That's what that is. Luckily, we don't have a descending triangle, which would have been a continuation pattern to the downside. Um, and I don't really see, um, it was an ascending triangle right here, actually. And it didn't break out, if you look right here. And then you get this line right here. It actually broke out to the downside. It kind of tested, it tested that area. Oh, it kind of broke out for a minute got rejected by the downward trending um, resistance right here though in the symmetrical triangle and we broke to the downside of this um, ascending triangle which would have been a bullish continuation pattern to the upside so that got um, broke to the downside we are in this symmetrical triangle squeeze right now um, hopefully this doesn't go to the downside even more if we do we will be going down to about i would say 365 to test um, before we go all the way down to our previous load about 350. So um, we're looking pretty decent here um, in, in the scheme of things. Let's, um, the EMA 9 is at about 413. We are still below the RSI, which means we don't have enough volume to sustain movement on the daily. That's why we went down. Now on the weekly, we have enough volume to sustain movement, but on the daily, um, we lost support right here and it broke. Um, and we tried to test it kind of right here and got rejected. So we went down further. This is pretty, uh, you know, cut and dry stuff right here. Um, the market's not doing anything funny. It's just kind of following, you know, um, normal patterns right here. So um, pretty good, pretty good. Uh, let's get some more indicators. I would like to see um, more moving averages here, like the 21. Unfortunately, I don't think we're above the 20. I could be wrong. Oh, dang it. <laughs> no, we aren't. So that's at 413. Um, the EMA 9, 416 for the EMA 21. Um, let's get rid of the RSI so I can bring one more EMA. Let's bring the 50 out here. All right. Yep. And so this was the resistance that we got rejected by. We did um, wick above it all the way up to 460. This was a nice breakout. I actually thought, you know, because we broke this downward trending um, resistance that we were going to break out. But look at this. Whoops. I'm trying to grab that one. Um, technically, you can take it out to the wick too. So technically, we haven't broke out of it. So sometimes you have multiple layers of resistance and you, you got to be aware of that. In, in the patterns because you have resistance here, but then you also have the wick, you know, resistance as well. So that's the bad thing about, you know, either choosing a candle body or a candle wick to go off of. Um, it, it's always good to look at the candle body to candle body, but if you're gonna do it, always go candle body to candle body and wick to wick. You can actually um, switch between those. Like, I mean, if you go wick to wick, you can do it on that, but what you can't do is go wick to candle body or you know, candle body to wick. So if you're gonna do it, go wick to wick or candle body to candle body. Just don't don't try to do both in the same pattern because you won't get a proper reading if you do it that way. Just a little little TA advice there that nobody told me <laughs> that I learned. Um, so yeah, we have this short squeeze right here and unfortunately most of the time that 
um, goes to the downside. But good thing is if we do hold support right here, um, we're good to go. And if not, we also do have a little more support right there. So we're going to have kind of a double little support there, which is good. We really need a lot of support at this level here. And we are starting to go back up, it looks like. So that's good. And if we do um, bounce the upside of this, it looks like we're going to go to about, you know, maybe $4.21, cents, $4.20, something like that. Um, and yeah. And it looks like the selling volume um, is going down. And that's a good thing, which means when the volume goes down like that, there is not as much selling going on, um, which could indicate a reversal um, from from um, a bearish trend to a bullish trend. So I'd like to see that, less selling volume, um, and then uh, some purchasing volume. That'd be good. Go to the top of this, break that, and then possibly go up to about 490. You know, um, probably not that high, though. We're probably going to be looking at 430 because that was our previous support that we broke. Yeah. This is going to be a big area to break out of now. Um, as you see, we kind of were held under this, broke a little bit above, above it, and then got rejected. So that's going to be a big, big resistance going up. Um, I really hope you guys are seeing that. Okay. Um, I think that's about all we're going to talk about today. I could go more in-depth into TA, but I really think it's just kind of a sit and wait thing for right now. Um, we, we have a couple of scenarios. We go back down. We break this three dollar and ninety um, cent support, and we go down to touch about three sixty three. If that breaks, um, start looking towards that low again. I don't think that's going to happen, but that's a bearish scenario. Now, the bullish scenario um, is actually more of a sideways thing. We just need to kind of hold tight, let Bitcoin do its thing, um, and get volume. That's what we need right now. That uh, we didn't look at that. What is the volume for internet computer right now? This is why we're not doing a whole lot. Um, we need like four x that volume. We really do. We, we really need um, just, and the market cap's still looking nice. Everything is looking nice. We just need more volume, more people using it. That's it. More people using um, the protocol. It's the best one. Cheapest gas. I mean, even the NFTs are far superior. You know, um, nobody could convince me to buy NFTs on Solana, Ethereum, um, but I was enamored by ICP NFTs. I don't have any NFTs besides ICP. And that's just because I love the people, the the project, the community. Um, I belong there. That's, I found where I belong in crypto. And that's something not everybody um, gets. So I'm very thankful for that. And you guys belong with me. So people that are not wise. Oh, you already said that. Okay. I'm like, you already said that. Well, I already read that. Uh, not to my knowledge, as far as I can tell, there are a lot of people still using trade bots, probably the bots creators doing market manipulation to buy in. So that's a double-edged sword right there. Some trading bots, like for institutional buyers like Michael Saylor, those are a good thing. I don't use bots because I just think there's a lot of trust going on. You got to trust the person who created the bot. You got to trust the exchange. You got to trust the bot. Um, and unfortunately, I don't have that much trust to give away um, to people I don't know. So <laughs> all my trust goes to the people that I know. And good projects. Decentralization is the way, guys. We have to. Look what FTX happened, right? Um, exchange need to start banning the use of automated trading systems. If they cannot prove that, you know, they are not malicious. I think every system that they have in these centralized exchanges should be scrutinized, should be tested by, you know, like the SEC or people, you know, in that the CFTC or the Trade Commission or something, you know? to keep us safe, but they don't care. They just want our money, uh, unfortunately. A funny fact of crypto market is when market is pumping, people fear it will dump. And when it is dumping, people are confident it will pump. Well, we've been in a market lately that has had a lot of manipulation. So I think people are just letting the dust settle right now um, and buying in secret. You know, And, and so this is the, the time to buy crypto. Not when Bitcoin's at 65,000, not when, when, you know, Cardano's up at like $2 and 50 cents, not when ICP is $350. You buy crypto at that point where everybody is, okay, let's look. If we go over here and we look, if you're buying when others are fearful and, and you're selling when they're not, let's go look at this here. You can see this whole year, um, all the way back to November, 2022, I, I, I would say, let's see. Seven days, three months. Let's do three months. 
Okay. So we go all the way up to 40. Wait, that doesn't make sense. Because. Okay, they don't show it very good on here. I need to find a different one because it goes up higher than 40. I know that for a fact. Like, it goes up to 100. That's what the, the fear and greed index is. It's supposed to go to 100. What is going on? Here we go. This is the one that we can show you. With. <laughs> I'm like, dude, that's a pretty bad thing. Okay, so if you're buying, when a, so when this is bright red, that's when everybody's fearful. So look at this. If you bought when everybody was greedy, you would have been buying at $66,000. If you're buying when everybody's greedy, you're buying at 52, 54,000. Now, if you're buying down here when everybody is not, okay, yeah, you're at 13, 35,000. Well, it went all the way up to 47,000. You would have made a nice $12,000 profit. So if you're buying here, yeah, you're still in the, okay. So even say you buy here, the next bull market, it's going to go higher than this for sure. But normally you wait for the bottom of that, which is this down to 19,000. So 19000 back in July. Okay, July. If you bought when everybody was the most fearful at a six, I think that's the most fearful we've been, is like a five, maybe a five or a six. Everybody is super fearful at $19,000. This is when people should be buying, but they're the most scared because they think the market's just going to keep going down, going down, going down. But they don't remember that every bull run, it goes way higher than that. This is what a previous bull run back here. And of course we go higher and that's what it's going to look like again in the next bull run. And every four years we go higher. But if you're buying when everybody is fearful, you're buying down here at 15,000, 15,000. So, but if you're buying when everybody's greedy, you're buying at 63, 65, 67, 63, 61, right? So any of these prices are actually a lot, any of them, even if you buy here, 29000 it went all the way up to $70,000. You doubled your money. So this is why, and, and you hold these. These are long-term positions, one to four years, and you'll make money. Almost guaranteed, not financial advice, common sense at that point, right? So um, that's why I like Bitcoin. That's why I got into cryptocurrency. I saw an opportunity every several years to make money. And it happens every single time. And I'm going to ride it every time. I'm going to buy when everybody's selling. And I'm going to sell when everybody's buying at $70,000, $100,000. When I sold at $63,000, I was called an idiot. I was called stupid. Everybody said it was going to 100, 100,000, a million. 63 was just a dumb sell. Well, let's look. Was 63,000 a dumb sell? I mean, it only went to 70. So yeah, I didn't time the top perfectly, but 63 compared to it only went to 70. I don't think that was a stupid move. I think that was a pretty, you know, awesome move actually. So um, just be, trust yourself guys, like use crypto influencers for what they're for to put stuff in your line of vision that you can research. That's it. That's all it is. That's all that we are there for not to sell a coin to you, not to tell you how much money of your money that we don't know your situation to invest. Only you know that. But if you follow simple rules like, you know, dollar cost average, don't try to beat the market, um, you know, uh, uh, take your profits, moon bags, those kind of things, then you'll be successful. And if you remember the four fundamentals, the chart technical analysis is one, the news is two, the ecosystem is three. And the fourth one is the bull or bear market. If you know those four things, you will be successful in crypto. Okay. So the Ichimoku cloud is one of the things that um, I want to study about. Um, I, I don't really do much because, you know, um, Six Figs has it on lock. And I don't need to, you know, I, I, last thing I want to do is compete with Six Figs. Um, I think we complement each other's channels well. So I will let him deal with the Ichimoku clouds and stuff. But um, I think it's definitely something that um, I, I will use in my personal um, trading portfolio um, because it's a very good thing. So uh, the Ichimoku cloud on Bitcoin is showing heavy resistance down to 16K. So it's another bearish downtrend. That's a possibility, especially when they use 
um, resistance to break a support level, which means they go all the way up to a resistance level and then pump it all the way down to break that support they were just at. And that's part of the Bitcoin hammer too. And it really wrecks altcoins when they do that. So uh, good evening to you, cut action. Um, oh, Genesis 2 NFTs is live art and I can watch the block volume on the screen. I think you already said that, or maybe I read it before. I don't know. Uh, Godmaster Ryan, let's go renegade. I'm just here to listen to wisdom. That's good. You know, wisdom is something earned. It's something that you you get over time from experience. And that's something that you can't just buy from somebody, right? You can't buy wisdom. You know, you can listen to them, but unless you go through it yourself, even if you go through the exact same thing that they did, all you did is hear about it. You might not even know how to react to that situation, right? So um, I just pray a blessing over all you guys. Um, I really do. I just hope you have a good holiday season. You know, um, be careful out there. You know, parking spots are not worth vandalizing somebody over. Uh, Dom had a motivational tweet tonight. It was pretty good. It was talking about the future of being all, all the Web3 apps launching on the SNS early 2023. Got me pumped. And yes, that, well, the tweet as well as the global R&D that they had today. It was a Christmas uh, Christmas special. Um, Dom, he man, he was the one making the video too. So um, if you think that Dom just sits back there and lets everybody work for him while he just sips his coffee, you're wrong, man. That guy, he works his tail off um, for defending. And that's, I, I, I can put, you know, some faith in into uh, a guy that is that, you know, gung ho, he, he's willing to be down there in the nitty gritty with us, you know, making videos, um, you know, supporting people. That's what you do as a leader. And um, that's somebody that I, I don't mind, you know, as a leader of mine, you know, um, what is SNS one and why is it building on ICP? If you want to answer that question, go watch um, the Definity Community ICP squad video with um, uh, uh, Andrew Sheffergy. Uh, I probably murdered that last name on accident. Um, but um, Sheffergy, go watch that video about SNS1 on ICP Squad channel. They talk about the SNS1. Um, basically, it is, um, it is something to do with the network nervous system. It is um, its own governance, I believe. And um, I, I'm, I still haven't done enough research on that yet. Um, and I'm going to very soon because I want it to be um, something we talk about on the channel, especially if it's a big part of ICP going forward. So um, I need to do my my due diligence on that for you guys. So I will spend a couple hours um, or a day, you know, kind of doing my um, research on that for you guys. So um, SNS was the first DAO launched on the service nervous system. It was the test token. OK, cool. So that's what it is. Um, good looking out. Um, so yeah, I knew, I knew it was integrated with the nervous system, the NNS, um, that is the front end DAP. Um, I don't know. I, I think it, maybe it connects the front to the back end. I don't know exactly. I'm not real tech savvy like that. Um, but if you, if really, if you want questions answered, Sheffergy is your guy. Um, he, he, he knows a lot about that kind of stuff. Um, and I'm going to learn about it too. So. Uh, or come back in a couple of weeks when I study it. <laughs> Take a look at CoffeeZilla video about it too. Yeah, there's some good um, videos out there. Um, Bitcoin Bros do some good videos on ICP. BitBoy is doing some great videos. You should check out the Dominic um, Williams interview on his channel. I think that video should be shared, liked, commented on by every single person who owns ICP. Um, all it's going to do is help get the word, help ICP go up in value. Um, but I, I believe in I believe in the project. So I'm not just in it for the money. I got um, in on the hot or not pre-sale pumped. They will be launching next year on SNS2. I got in on the hot or not pre-sale. That reminds me of like hot or not or a uh, hot shot. One day you're hot, one day you're shot. But I like to be on point, baby. Gasoline uh, dissolves it into a liquid. Ooh. ICP is two ways. Pro profile system profile system. When it pumps, it gives you more USDT. And when it dumps, they give you more ICP tokens like Ghost or Dog. I have no clue what you're saying there. I'm sorry, I can't follow you there. Uh, huh? Okay. You don't own enough ICP, neither do I. I don't think we all do. All right, guys. Um, I think these questions go on for a long time. 
I'm not trying to ignore anybody. Uh, USDC is safer, but I don't trust it. Yeah. So it worries me when they start, you know, being competitors instead of colleagues. Um, oh, it's USDC over USDT. Why not? You know, they're both good. Let's uh, the people that own them or whatever make sure that they're both still good like they've been. All they have to do is keep doing what they're doing. If they keep doing what they're doing, USDC and USDT are fine, right? Unless they're doing stuff we don't know about. So um, I'm going to pick one of these comments and I'm giving away an ICP. So whoever stayed, congrats to you. Um, let's see. I think cut action. Wait, who asked me about the SNS? Okay, motivational sub, and then he answered that for. Okay, yeah. So cut action. You um, do me a favor and send me your address, not your principal ID, on Twitter if you DM me. Um, here, I will get my banner out so you can see. Um, it's Bitcoin Renegade, but the R in Renegade after that, the E is a three. So it's Bitcoin Renegade, and the the E, the first E in Renegade is a three. So as you see it down there, Bitcoin Renegade, DM me on your Twitter account, or if you don't have Twitter, go to my Telegram group um, and uh, just say hi or something and I'll DM you. Um, and I will send you an ICP for being act, not only being active, you know, in the chat, but also ask, um, answering one of my um, audience's questions. That's really nice of you, especially because I didn't really know. <laughs> and um, I'm one of those people who will tell you if I don't know something, because I, I believe giving you the best information I can is better than me pretending I know something and giving you false information. If I ever give you the wrong information, it's, it's definitely a mistake. And I, I work very hard to never do that. So, um, so I'm really into stoic wallet now. I used to really love plug, but they basically abandoned their, well, they didn't abandon it. Um, that's probably too harsh of a word. They, uh, cause they did leave it in good hands. So they, they moved on to other things, but it kind of feels like it left because that was the wallet we loved. Like that's the wallet I used. That was my main wallet. Like I loved plug, but now I, I want a wallet that has a team that's always working on. I want, like, if something happens, I need to be able to go to the team and be like, hey, guys, you know, like, what's going on here? And, and most of the time, it's probably not even a big deal. They tell me, hey, you know, you're worrying for nothing. Here's this, this, and that. And then, boom, we're good. So um, my new favorite wallet now is Stoic because um, Tonic Labs is behind it. They got Bob Bodily. You know, they um, even the old CEO was great. Um, I just, I like what they're doing there. Um, and it just, it, it wasn't the right fit for me before because they didn't have the ICB tokens and the NFTs didn't work all the way, but they got all that fixed. The NFTs, all the, even the ones that aren't on Interpot show up on there now, all your tokens, everything's, and I can use it for my phone or my computer. So, um, I really like Stoic Wallet now. That, that's, I guess I kind of migrated because of the plug thing. Um, cause plug was my go-to wallet and now it's 100% Stoic. Um, from plug our stoic so we can send you one ICP. Yeah, so that's all I, I just need to be able to send um, To uh, your address because I'm not using plug. That's why I asked for your address not your principal ID um, I'm sure I could send it to a principal ID from stoic, but it's easier. Just give me your address um, Yeah, thank you so much everybody. Um, I hope you have a good day You probably won't get to see my face again for a while um, until I heal up and um, I'm having dental surgery. I'm probably getting all 21 teeth pulled. Maybe we can salvage them. I mean, if I take really, really good care of my mouth, I don't know. <laughs> I've been doing that, but, um, anyway, um, I will, do I like potato salad? It depends on who makes it. When people ask me if I like a certain food, like my mom can cook really good. So if my mom makes it probably, or if like, you know, one of my ex-wife couldn't cook, um, uh, some of my ex-girlfriends could cook, you know, like, but I'm a good cook myself. Um, I don't make potato salad though. I, I'm more of a meat guy, but yeah, potato salad's good. I mean, it's, it's decent depending on who makes it. Um, Ooh, we have assassin bugs. <laughs> this assassin bug keeps tripping out. I think I'm going to let him free though. I don't want, I don't want to damage him. So. All right, guys, that being said, goodbye and good Bitcoin. Bang!